Welcome to Full House, a bringing together of some colleagues, old and new, from Minneapolis, St. Paul, and from New York City. This is part one of the show in St. Paul, in, uh, in our live workspace, in a portion of our live workspace. Your hosts are Paulette Myers Rich and David Rich, along with Ethan Pettit, who will be hosting part two of this show at his gallery in Brooklyn in September. This first painting is by Gilly Levy. She's been showing her strong and fiery paintings with Ethan for some time, as has this fellow, Robert Egert. He's also from New York City. Paints these layered configurations. This piece here is by Christian Nielsen. Very powerful and concentrated painter from Minneapolis. Christian departed this world too soon a couple of years ago, but left us some amazing paintings to think about. He, I got to work with him throughout his studies at Minneapolis College of Art and Design. I can tell you his paintings have been uh, very much his own right from the get-go. This next one is Patricia Satterley whose paintings have been making a big impact on me in the last couple of years. I find them to be clear, decisive, funny, voluptuous, and dance-like. A kind of embodied abstraction from a woman's point of view. Patricia Satterley. Marcy Rosenblatt, also from Brooklyn. Marcy, Marcy coaxes some amazing patterns and ghost images out of the paint. I know I'm closing in a little on this, but trying to just show you some of those undertones she gets. She lays fabric and things in the paint while it's drying and uh, pulls it up after a while and works with these ghost images that really kind of inform her work. This is Clarence Morgan paints these very charged fields of activity, lives and works in Minneapolis, and uh, his work really seems to, oh, I don't know, somehow trigger all the synapses in our brains as we're looking at them. They're very, almost dizzying, but uh, really fun to travel through. Arlene Burke Morgan, she also works with pattern in a somewhat different way. These are very densely layered. I wish you could see how you can almost enter the painting a little bit sideways and pass between these very open layers. Caroline Kent, a very playful and serious painter from St. Paul. She runs an interesting place called The Bindery Project along with her husband, Nate Young. I apologize about these reflections. However, I will tell you that one of the pleasures of living with other people's work like this for a few weeks is some of these unexpected dialogues that show up. Like you see Meg Lipke's little painting behind me reflected across the hall and there's this fun dialogue between these, unexpected dialogue between a lot of these works. It's kind of the motivation of doing something like this, I think. This is Kai Anderson from Brooklyn. This one feels very clear to me as if it's a uh, cosmological diagram of some sort having to do with psychic states or perhaps relationships. Rob Fisher is a sculptor who is amazingly attuned to the histories and the stories and the ordinary wear and tear on materials and places. He reconfigures all kinds of found materials in his work, reconfigures his own work, recombining materials and ideas. This is made by, uh, <laughs> this series of prints was made using the roller from a mop found at the downtown Brooklyn prison. We have a little drawing room going in here. This is a drawing by Gary Buckendorf of New York City. 
there he really carves out spaces of light with his eraser and uh, gets some amazing dense passages, fiery chunks of dark, this charcoal. We're going to see a little bit of an animation now by Sarah Worcester called The Sky. This piece has been a real big hit among the many neighborhood kids that have been coming by the last few weeks to see this show. Sarah Worcester, The Sky. And Melissa Cook. She does graphite and charcoal drawings of these delicate and sometimes unnerving uh, kind of intimate and sticky situations. This is Aaron Spangler. These are a couple of rubbings that Aaron did, I, th I believe from portions of his recent larger sculptures. He carves wood, comes up with some amazing collisions of imagery, symbols, utilitarian, tools, patterns, and puts them together in provocative ways. This is a sort of a meditation, a single continuous motion by Howard Oransky from St. Paul. This piece is by Barbara Kraft from Minneapolis, small painting exploring well, it's got something to do with a place. It's uh, based on the Jewish cemetery in Hamburg. And this painting is by Jan Holthoff. We know Jan from Brooklyn, um, although he's presently back in Germany. And he shows with Ethan Pettit, as well as a few places in Germany. This is Eva Schicker, a watercolor. She does a pretty broad range of work, too, often combining writing and drawing with watercolor and in the past she's done amazing photographs and films always in the service of some kind of open-ended autobiographical storytelling Ava Schicker there's another watercolor this one is by Mary Esch from St. Paul I feel like we're seeing some of Mary's neighbors in their windows at night Todd Bienvenu from Brooklyn, formerly from uh, Louisiana, The Space Between Us. Todd will be having a show pretty soon at uh, Life on Mars Gallery. Jim Denemy, he is an Anishinaabe painter from Minnesota who revisits historical events with a real mixture of uh, sadness, anger, and a mighty sense of humor. Jim Denemy. Attack on New Ulm. And this here is Jim Donahue from Brooklyn. Now Jim comes up with these amazingly dissonant, stormy, weird color things that make me feel like something is really weird with my eyes. And it's a, it's a powerful experience. Carrie Law. Part of Carrie's view includes a distant glimpse of the uh, Empire State Building. So he often revisits this view and paints these different, almost nightly, sort of atmospheric condition reports. And when the weather is doing this, if this is what he sees, this is what he paints. Kathy Bradford's paintings have been tugging at my heart for a long time for their combination of funkiness, humor, beauty, struggle. This, uh, I feel like something resides just below the surface of the imagery here where I feel like I can somehow sense Kathy's train of thought in uh, working with the paint to bring her to this image or to bring this image to us as viewers. So, just a few more works here. This is Chandra Majumdar a uh, usually observation-based painter from Brooklyn who's very alert to uh, implied spaces and his paintings have a ghosty and mysterious poetry about them that really gets me uh, almost every time. 
passages of light and shadow that just seem to cut right through the space in a very open way. Barbara Lee, another very poetic um, painter based on observation. She's from St. Paul. She's sort of a fiery uh, heart and soul, blood and guts kind of painter. I love how she gets that jar of water with just a few little scratches through the paint, and yet somehow we can sense its uh, sculptural presence, density, luminosity, very palpable. Had the pleasure of working with Barb long ago when she was a student at Minneapolis College of Art and Design. Meg Lipke, her paintings have been mesmerizing me for some time now. They always look different from each other, but they're always really visually engaged in a powerful way. She had an amazing show at uh, Parallel Art Space last year in Brooklyn. So I'm gonna try to keep in touch with her work because it's really interesting. Barbara Friedman, she uh, is from New York. She loves painting from the old maestros. Barbara never lets up until she brings forth something very much her own from these excursions and she shows regularly with Ethan Pettit. This is Emily Noel Lambert. Um, I think she's from Queens most of the time but uh, anyway she shows uh, at Lou Magnus on the Lower East Side and I can tell you you do not get works like this if you're not willing to really take some serious risks in uh, layering and cutting and reworking and moving things around. Emily Noel Lambert, she seems to be a fearless painter who is playful and restless and uh, willing to struggle. Tim Tozer, painter from Minneapolis, abstract painter whose spaces are often very open and powerfully implied architectural spaces. Eric Benson, one of his first paintings of his new neighborhood in Minneapolis, Northeast. And uh, the poetic content is similar to some of his Brooklyn paintings. You feel like we're behind this fence and things are growing up through it. That basketball net's getting a little raggedy. He has a sister painting to this one in which the moon is rising just behind the backboard and it almost appears to be the size of a basketball. And uh, it's a bit of visual poetry that is so fun and beautiful, and I really love that in Eric's work. Okay. Here we have Jill Evans from Minneapolis. She really traverses through some very disparate parts of town in this little configuration. Different materials and sources. Uh, real open-ended kind of collage-like space that's very intriguing. This piece by Amelia Bewald is delicate, but it's uh, really powerful. I hope you can see it okay in this camera. But it's, um, oh, she kind of paints these uh, predicaments, you know, beautiful and thought-provoking predicaments. Alyssa Jensen, she does street scenes in Brooklyn gets the beautiful relationship between some of the large graffiti writing and the spaces we all move through. And I love how she gets that little walk guy in the street light up in the corner. That little walk guy, that little second figure in that painting about to exit the space. Here we have Carol Lee Chase from Minneapolis. She uh, layers patterns uh, in this one, she gets this real smoky undertone and then sort of translucent veil over that. So, I thank you for visiting Full House. If you want to learn a little more, check out Ethan Pettit Gallery's website. Over and out.